Hello parents, welcome to my first YouTube video. Uh, I'm trying to keep my students and parents updated on what we have learned in class. So uh, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, excuse me if I make any mistakes. Uh, just so you know, if you're thinking about what are these numbers here, I told the students based on their last year's evaluation at the end of the year, uh, what did their teacher uh, rate them as, as far as their reading level goes. Um, if you were O or N or below, it meant that you were at the third grade level. P, Q, and R is fourth grade level, so this is like the beginning of fourth grade, the middle, towards the end of fourth grade. So in fifth grade, when the students come into fifth grade, we're hoping that they're an R, but I am. Um, fifth grade, for us, it's going to be an S at the beginning of the year. That's where we would like them to be. T by the middle of the year and a U by the end of the year. And that these are kind of C grades. So uh, if they want to achieve more than a C, higher than that, then they have to be reading at a higher level. Okay? These are kind of the minimums. All right. Let me go ahead and start talking about how our day usually is. We do math in the morning. Then we do either science or social studies. The students have social studies with Ms. Shelton. They'll have science with me. Then we go to lunch. We have teacher-directed PE where we'll exercise before I allow the students to have some free time. I'll be out there with the students as well. We'll be doing other things like pull-ups and those kinds of things later on. Then uh, in the afternoon we do our word study. Uh, we do some writing and some reading. I'll do a read aloud. I'll try to do a read aloud every day. And then we end our day with uh, our specials, which will be on a rotating basis. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and begin with uh, what have we done so far this year? We, this, this is just at the beginning of our second week. So you'll see in math, we've already done kind of a lot. All right, one of the things that we're working on in math is with arrays. Now, the purpose of arrays is for students to learn about factors of a number, okay? Now, we've gone over this in class. Um, factors or any number we multiply by another number to get our product, which is an answer in the multiplication problem, okay? So to help the students out, we use arrays, for example, to help them understand this. So the most important thing that the students have to know with arrays is how to construct them looking at the number model that we're going to give them. Now, a number model consists of, and I will give this an example. For example, we have 3 times 5 equals 15. That is a number model. Okay? The most important thing with a number model is we have an uh, operation symbol. Operation symbol will be multiply, divide, add, subtract, and a relation symbol. A relation symbol will be greater than, less than, equal, and in this case we have an equal sign. Okay? Now the students, the goal for the students is that they're going to make arrays, and they made arrays, looking at a number model. Okay? Now what we learned in class, well, let me go ahead and make sure we understand that this is a factor. It is a number we multiply by another number to get a product. This is also a factor, and this is our product. Okay. I hope those are big enough in your head. Um, so how are we going to construct our array is what the students have to be concerned with. Okay. The first number is the rows. How many rows across? So the first number is we're going to go straight up and down. That tells us how many rows are going to be across. We're going to have three rows. So the first number, on, when we talk about arrays, corresponds to rows. The second number is how many uh, numbers do we have in each row, or how many dots. So we have three rows, and in this case we have five dots in each row. We'll count the first one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we notice, as long as we're neat, this is called a rectangular array. It has to be able to make a rectangle. And uh, 
This is what we call our rectangular array for this number model. All right. Probably the biggest mistake students make when they're making these on a test is they reverse these by mistake. Okay. So we have three rows and we have five columns. Okay. Going up and down. Okay. I like to just say we have, you know, first number goes up and down, the second number goes across. On a test, for example, they'll say, okay, you're going to plant some plants. You have 20 plants. Uh, you have to have at least four rows. And then the students have to determine, uh, using those 20, what the array is going to look like. Okay. All right. Something else we worked on in math were prime and composite numbers. What students have to understand is that a prime number oopsie, a prime number has only and here's the important part only two factors. And those two factors for a prime number are 1 and itself. All right. So those are what prime numbers are, only two factors. Notice that the definition of a prime number says two factors. So what we have to, the students have to understand is that 1 is not a prime number. It's not a prime number because the factors are of 1 are just 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. It's the same factor over and over again. Okay? A prime number has to have two factors, 1 and itself. So 1 is going to be considered like a special number. We'll talk about that later. Okay? All other numbers that are not prime numbers, and we're talking about whole numbers here, are going to be called composite numbers. If it is not prime and they're whole numbers, they're going to be composite numbers. That is what students have to know. In math, we also learned about factor trees. Now, we'll, we'll be still studying that this week and hopefully go on in, in, into next week. We may be doing some more. But the main thing is factor trees are going to help students determine what are the factors of any given number, all right? So, for example, um, let's choose an easy one here first. Uh, let's pick the number 25. Now, always 1 times 25, 1 times any number, so we'll go 1 times 25. Okay. And what else equals 25? Well, hopefully the students know their times tables. I know 2 doesn't go in there, 3 doesn't go in there. The only thing that equals 25 is 5 and 5. 5 times 5 equals 25. We kind of think of this as little times right here. Okay? That's a prime number. That's a prime number. When, when all the numbers left are prime numbers, we know we're done. So, the factors of 25 are 1, 5, and 25. Now, if we do a factor, if we do a, uh, we learned about factor rainbows. One times 25 is 25. Five times five is 25. So those are all the factors of 25. Okay. Now I'm going to try a little bit bigger number. Okay. I'm going to go with the factors of. Let's see here. The factors of 36. Now the factors of 36, of course, 1 times 36. Now there's different ways to do a factor tree. I prefer prime factorization. Um, but there's lots of different ways to do it. I know that uh, I look at that. It's an even number. So 
2 goes into 3 one time. That leaves 1 left over, 16, 2 times 18. I know that 18, 3 goes into 18, so we have 3 times 6 equals 18. And I know that 6 is 2 times 3. Now, if we look at that, I, can, I already know, because I know my times tables, I know that I don't have all the factors. Okay? But let's do the factor tree uh, and what I, with what I have so far. I say I have a 1, I have a 2, I have a 3, I already have a 2 and a 3. My next biggest number here, I see I have a 6, I have an 18, I see that, I have a 36. Okay, and here's where we kind of need to be careful sometimes. Alright, now, I can see on the factor rainbow, 1 times 36 is 36, 2 times 18 is 36, 3 times 6 is not 36. So I know that I must be missing a factor, okay? So how am I going to find that missing factor, okay? We can use a combination of, of what we have here to help us find that missing number if we like, okay? Now I know three goes into three one time, three's gone, three goes into there two times, so I know that I'm missing a 12 here, that's one of my factors, okay? So three times 12 is 36, and six times six is 36, then that means I've got all the factors, okay? Now, what I've been teaching my students, and I'm going to start off with the 36 again, I'm going to erase this, and try to make their lives a little bit easier, I hope, if they get a hang of it. Okay. 36 is the same as 6 times 6, and 6 is the same as 2 times 3, and this is the same as 2 times 3. This is what we call prime factorization. I start off with my number, I have only prime numbers left. Now what I've taught my students is, put these in order. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36, that's how we get our 36. Now, I see I'm missing some factors here. I know I'm still missing some factors here because we never got 4 times 9. Did you notice that? So here's what we need to do to help out the students. Okay? Because this way, you know, I still kind of fooled myself here. I'm still missing, and I, if I know my times tables, I know 4 times 9. So here's what we need to do. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 is a factor of 36. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 is a factor of 36, and 12 times 3 gives me my 36. I go from left to right on the top. I go from uh, right to left on the bottom. 3 times 3 is 9. There's that missing 9 I was looking for. 2 times 9 is 18, and 2 times 18 is 36. So now if I look at this, I can find out, oh, I did miss something over there. I, I was missing a 9, which should be here, and a 4, which should be here, and those are all the factors of 36.